The answer to the question of who is the richest person in history can neither be simple nor accurate. The first difficulty lies in the structure of wealth. The richest people of the ancient world possessed not only precious metals and stones, real estate and livestock, their fortunes included enormous tracts of land, often entire countries, as well as thousands or tens of thousands of people, sometimes enslaved in true slavery, sometimes simply subjects, still fully subject to the ruler. Ancient societies were most often absolute monarchies, and the concentration of power in them meant that the centers of wealth almost always coincided with the centers of government, the richest person was the monarch, and private capitals could not compete with the ruler's wealth. The second difficulty was purely counting. Careful recalculation of the value of historical assets into present-day money involves assumptions, for example, two centuries ago a horse was the equivalent of a modern car. In addition, inflation must be taken into account, at least for the period during which the currencies of present-day states circulate. Finally, while the modern equivalent of the value of gold, silver, land, and buildings can be obtained, albeit with assumptions, the economic effect of slavery cannot be estimated. The history of slavery and the slave trade is described in detail in the exhaustive four-volume Cambridge World History of Slavery. Labor, land, and capital were the three main factors of production, and in the industries that formed the basis of the ancient economy, construction, crafts, the share of labor was greater than it is today. The slave owner received this factor for free, or more precisely, at cost at the price of food and housing. Trying to estimate what number of machines corresponded to a slave's head can only be very tentative. The Richest People in History Nevertheless, lists of the richest people in history have been compiled many times. One good and scientifically truthful one is the compilation compiled by Time magazine, of historical figures it includes Genghis Khan, no estimate of the amount, the Breton Knight Alain the Red, $194 billion, the Padishah of the Mughal Empire Akbar the First Great, no estimate of the amount, the Chinese Emperor Shenzong, no estimate of the amount, and the Roman Governor Octavian Augustus. Researchers agree that the first line is occupied by Mansa Musa, the ruler of the state of Mali in the middle of the 14th century AD. His fortune is conservatively estimated in the range of $300 to $400 billion in modern terms. Due to the conventionality of the calculations, the list sometimes includes the Hyderabad Nizam, William I Conqueror, as well as the Russian Emperor Nicholas II, conditional capital estimate of $300 to $900 billion. Most of the ancient fortunes were dynastic. The richest monarchs in the world at best multiplied the inheritance they inherited. Though, for example, the Emperor Marcus Licinius Crassus managed to multiply his family fortune dozens of times during his rule, he inherited approximately 300 talents and within several years had transformed it into 7,100, the estimate of Plutarch. By the end of his life, Pliny estimated his wealth at 200 million sesterces, about $9 billion in current value. A new page in the history of the largest fortunes began with the emergence of industry, which enabled the creation of large manufacturing facilities owned by private entrepreneurs and then industrial empires. The list of the richest families whose fortunes were formed during the industrial era is well known, the Rothschilds, who still own a colossal financial conglomerate, John Rockefeller, who owned Standard Oil and at the time of his death had about $340 billion in assets. Andrew Carnegie's estate is even more accurate, in 1901 he sold the Carnegie Steel Company to J.P. Morgan for $480 million, which at current prices is about $310 billion. The assets of Henry Ford and Cornelius Vanderbilt were comparable in size. Ideologically, the first commodity capitals were still earned by dishonest means, and Rockefeller's phrase I can account for every million of mine except the first is true of most of his colleagues in the industry. It is believed that the oilmen of the early 20th century, when fighting their rivals, did not hesitate to use illegal methods and physical force to establish and strengthen their dynasty, protecting it from attack, de facto using the same tools that kings used to protect and develop their empires. In doing so, they were already entrepreneurs, albeit raw, building their empire practically from scratch, using intelligence and business acumen, while staying within the constraints imposed by states and governments. In all cases, building industrial conglomerates was a long process that took decades in the lives of the founders and 100 to 150 years in the dynasties they created. 
The character traits necessary for success in that era were specific. The future resource billionaires had a sharp mind, possessed maximum toughness and fearlessness, were able to negotiate and go all the way. Their qualities largely coincided with the traits of the rich of antiquity. Soon the dominance of resource billionaires began to come under pressure from industrial billionaires, who were much faster, understood how to make a business autonomous, and, in fact, did not seize assets, but built factories and created a process that allowed, by attracting technology and people, to make profits as quickly as possible. As a result, their period of enrichment was much shorter, a decade or two was enough to build an industrial empire. A good example is Henry Ford, who was the first to introduce the assembly line and became a billionaire rather quickly, literally in a decade. From the founding of the Detroit Automobile Company to its complete consolidation, it took only 20 years. By that time, Ford had managed to produce 15 million cars. Certainly at this stage, the qualities necessary for success evolved. Connections were necessary, or the ability to acquire them. The circle of communication was important, including with predecessors resource billionaires, the ability to quickly negotiate, to use resources, to find access to them. At the same time, the industrialists did not need to be so tough. It is clear that most likely they were breaking the law somewhere, probably, they were creative in their taxation, but the competition in the markets turned from resource-based to product-based. In addition, by this time, Fairly strong social groups such as workers' assemblies and unions had already formed, which also influenced the behavior of entrepreneurs, preventing them from using the harshest of methods previously available to resource billionaires. For more than 50 years, the algorithm for earning a billion-dollar fortune remained more or less the same as in Henry Ford's years, starting up production, expanding it, tweaking processes, getting the most out of scale. The next wave of large fortunes and the next earning paradigm became real in the age of technology corporations. Billionaires in the Age of Technology Unlike the industrial billions, the technological billions were earned from breakthrough technologies and the creation of a garage economy that grew into corporations, Microsoft and Apple were garage-built companies. The basis for the development of technology companies was knowledge, and the most important qualities of future billionaires were creativity, speed of thinking and involvement, belief in their technology. Capital ceased to be a problem, the European and American market formed a full-fledged infrastructure, including exchanges, investment funds and the established practice of investments by private individuals, which we now call angel investors. Of course, there is a difference between the fortunes created by hardware and software, Hardware billionaires were more closely aligned with industrial ones, the approach to organizing manufacturing companies in electronics, computing, computers, and peripherals is very similar to other industrial corporations. Future software billionaires had to be very light at the start, manage a lot of communications, have a broad outlook and, over and above that, be able to take their business outside their home country. The success of most software products lay in the developer's ability to make their solution international, and the way of doing business cross-border, which allowed the use of cheap labor in other countries. It was this trend that laid the foundation for the model that would become freelancing in the future. For the first time in history, the key to success was not so much land or resources as the head, ideas and the ability to manage such structures. The time frame for acquiring large fortunes was noticeably shorter. The founders of technology businesses made hundreds of millions of dollars in five to seven years. For example, Apple Incorporated was founded in early 1977 and held its IPO in late 1980, bringing its capitalization to $1.7 billion. This placement made millionaires about 300 people from among the company's employees and investors, and Steve Jobs' share was valued at $217 million. The key success factor was not a resource, technology or utilitarian product, but something more, the attention to the interface, design, consideration of user experience. The further development of the technological segment was noticeably simplified because during this period an ecosystem was created, an environment within which it became possible to repeat the success of technological unicorns over and over again. It was necessary to ensure that every user had a personal computer, after which its consumption, through software products, became almost unlimited, unlike food, where the limit is set by physiology, 
IT solutions are multiple, diverse, and their success with the user depends on the creator's creativity, understanding of psychology, sociology and work with behavioral factors. The next breeding ground for fast and easily replicable products was the internet. It was the emergence of social networks that allowed Facebook and Google to become global corporations worth tens of billions of dollars. The factors of success and the release of value, and, consequently, the wealth of the founders, in this environment are even further from the physical, the leaders are those who better understand society, look creatively at solving problems or even setting them, are able not only and not so much to develop products, as to gather intellectual teams around them. At the moment when all the basic needs for communication have been satisfied and life has accelerated as much as possible, the next round of billions emerged at the junction of offline and online, entrepreneurs thought that it would be good to speed up and automate the usual human life, movement, shopping, even eating. Dozens of companies like Uber and Airbnb have formed on this spiral, and Amazon has gained new functionality. It was Jeff Bezos who recently became the absolute record holder among living billionaires, with a fortune of $112 billion. In this field, where business development often involves substantial capital and marketing expenditures again, speed of response and the ability to quickly create scale and capture a noticeable market share are important in addition to creativity. Wealth is here and now. Today offers a tremendous range of opportunities to create a large business with a billion dollar value. One trend that can be exploited is the continuing growth of interest in spectacle. This need can be met by creating vivid content or the means to deliver it. A good example is Twitch, a service whose audience consists of gamers who don't produce anything but are simply entertained. They use Twitch as a streaming platform, show their game to others, involve millions of other users in the system, make hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars, and the platforms that allow them to do this become billions in value. Of course, it is impossible to discuss the topic of easy billions without the word blockchain. An industry that has grown a thousandfold in 2017 seems to have come out of nowhere. In fact, every technological explosion has a preparatory period. Blockchain appeared more than seven years ago, but only now has interest in the technology gained critical traction. There are plenty of nominal billionaires in the cryptocurrency market whose fortunes exceeded the 10-digit mark last year, the most recent example is the Ripple project, whose founders made it into the top 100 richest people on the planet in a few months. But there are more measured results, the Winklevoss brothers became billionaires thanks to an investment in Bitcoin made in 2012. Today, money is becoming more and more easy and mobile, to get billions of dollars, you need to be an overlogist, think about tomorrow, feel the trends at the moment of their birth, not at the moment of a global hype. Some cases confirm that it is possible to make a billion almost single-handedly, the Minecraft project, bought by Microsoft for $2.5 billion, was made by a tandem of two enthusiasts and supported by a tiny team of geek Scandinavians. This process will only accelerate. Forbes magazine will soon need to expand its list of richest people by a couple of orders of magnitude. If you were interested thank the author by giving me a nickname. And also don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss even more interesting videos on my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking bell and share this clip with your friends. What else interesting you can add on this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.